Twain famously quipped, I didn't have time to write a short letter, so I wrote a long one instead. The truth at the center of Twain's joke is that it is easy to write at length about anything. You can just go on and on. Eventually, if you write long enough, you're sure to say what you mean sooner or later, or at least to convey a general impression of what you're talking about. What is difficult, what requires real mental concentration and patient reflection, is to say precisely what you want to say, nothing more and nothing less. This kind of precision requires careful thinking at two levels. At the conceptual level, it requires writers to zero in on the essence of what they are trying to communicate. At the level of language, moreover, it requires weighing each word against alternative possibilities with an attentive ear for the words that convey maximum impact. Welcome to the world of Twitter, the most popular microblogging site on the web, where posts are limited to a maximum of 140 characters. Since its launch in 2006, Twitter has become one of the most popular sites on the web, playing an ever-increasing role in promoting immediacy and interactivity, particularly through mobile phones and other portable electronic devices. The bite-sized proportions of a tweet are perfectly calculated to enhance the immediate digestibility and shareability of the message. Maintaining an active Twitter feed allows a marketer to get directly into its audience's phones and directly into their heads on a regular basis, promoting the kind of intimate brand relationship that can translate into sales, views, or social action. One problem faced by people who are just starting to use Twitter for the first time is that they feel that they don't have anything to say, and they feel that even if they do say what they have to say, for example, a 140-character statement of their key message, they have said everything that they have to say. This is the wrong way of looking at the situation. People don't tweet primarily because they have something to say. The circle moves in the other direction. They come up with things to say because they're on Twitter. Like many social media sites, Twitter constitutes an invitation and a challenge to brand managers to invent new formulas for articulating their message. Successful Twitter writers use their Twitter feeds as a kind of laboratory where they can conduct new messaging experiments, test drive new ideas, and generate strategies for reaching out to new potential audiences. Creative people tend to espouse the principle of multiplicity. If your boss comes up to you asking for an idea about what to do about X, or if you are trying to write a song for a special occasion, or if you are trying to come up with a new way of doing Y, a sound approach is to come up with five different ideas, write a few different kinds of songs, or come up with five solutions to the question. This is a good approach not only because it is possible and even likely that the fifth answer will be better than the first, but more importantly, because this mental exercise foregrounds the variety of possible answers, the way different answers may combine into unforeseen possibilities, and the infinite creative flexibility of the imagination. Twitter provides a wonderful opportunity for brand managers to harness the power of multiplicity as they solve the problem of how to articulate a specific key message in an open-ended series of what may become thousands of different tweets. As a way of getting you started thinking about ways of diversifying your message, I would propose the following list of 13 ways of writing a tweet. The examples are tweets from Keep Edgewood Beautiful, a hypothetical brand committed to cleaning up the litter in New Haven's Edgewood Park. So the first and probably uh, most useful kind of tweet answers the question, what are you doing right now? The most significant feature of Twitter is its ability to blast a random thought from your head into a million people's pockets. The sense of receiving first-hand information about something as it is happening is what draws people to Twitter and what stimulates their dopamine output most gratifyingly. Tell your followers what is happening with your brand at this moment, especially if it's something they can get involved in. So here's the example from Keep Edgewood Beautiful. Meeting at the gazebo right now for a group clean-up-a-thon. Bring your trash bags and your litter stick. Number two, convey an emotion. Computers don't tweet. People do. If computers wrote tweets, chances are they would be really boring. They might be informative, correctly worded, and reliable, but in the absence of some intricate AI program, they would lack that human spark of wit, personality, and emotion that we recognize as distinctly human. Tweet like a human, even if it makes you sound a little foolish, as in the following example. OMG, I am so psyched to see how many parkgoers turned out for our cleanupathon. Hashtag awesome people. Number three, provide information. The best Twitter feeds provide a variety of content, mixing together messages that amuse, messages that move, and messages that inform. Whatever your brand does, think of a body of information that is associated with your activities and use your Twitter feed to raise awareness and provide useful data about that topic. This strategy conveys an air of concern and expertise, and it increases the extent to which your Twitter feed acts as a valuable resource for your followers. So an example from Keep Edgewood Beautiful, 
The public hearing on the city budget is 7 p.m. this Thursday at Career High. Great chances to make our voices heard. Number four, comment on a current event. Twitter is plugged into the currents of global communications. If you were to visualize the Twitterscape as a kind of blob of data, you could see it shaping and stretching and contracting and contorting in synchronicity with the same forces, political, financial, environmental, cultural, etc., that shape human life on planet Earth. In order to surf Twitter's tidal currents most effectively, compose tweets that align your brand's activities with global events that are unfolding in real time. So here's an example. Uh, 2,300 pounds of trash litter, Tahoe Beach is after fireworks. America the Beautiful? Uh, with a link to the website. Number five, connect to a trending topic or hashtag. Similarly, certain topics and hashtags trend for reasons that have no direct connection to current events. Jumping on the bandwagon of trending topics can help increase your tweet's exposure and has the added benefit of associating your brand with hip and upwardly mobile memes. Search trending hashtags on Twitter for up-to-date lists of what people are tweeting about and make a connection between the topic and your brand's message. So here's a quote from Nadine Gordimer, who passed away while I was putting together this lecture. Wash away pollution and bring human beings into the font of naked joy. Hashtag Nadine Gordimer. Gordimer. Number six, make a rhyme. It is important to avoid taking yourself too seriously in your tweets. A fun way to do something a little out of the ordinary while simultaneously articulating a turn of phrase that might stick in somebody's thoughts is to state your message in the form of a short rhyme. Rhythm and rhyme are powerful linguistic tools that bind the content of a message to a particular statement of the message in a way that can produce a very compelling cognitive impact on an audience. If you are lucky, you might even generate an earworm a short turn of phrase that continues to echo in a person's thoughts long after exposure to the original statement. So here's an example. Welcome to Twitter. Let's pick up some litter with a link to the website. Number seven, share a statistic. Specific pieces of numerical data are a perfect fit for Twitter. They compress a lot of information into an easily shareable soundbite. They express a sense of expertise and objectivity, and they give your audience a sense that they are learning something as a result of following your feed. Alarming statistics can draw attention to the urgency of your cause, encouraging statistics can help to build and sustain momentum, and even random statistics can usually be creatively handled to help promote your key message. So here's an example from Keep Edgewood Beautiful. 50% of all littered items are cigarette butts. Quit smoking, clean up your lungs, and clean up our public spaces. Number eight, announce a call to action. The most dramatic effect of Twitter is its ability to inspire collective action among a vast network of people. Flash mobs, boycotts, and even revolutions have been fueled by mass activity on the part of Twitter users, combining their own personal passions into a public assemblage of coordinated individuals. In addition to spreading information, Twitter can make things happen. Decide what you want people to do, then use your Twitter feed as a way of encouraging people to do it. And here's an example. July 15th is National Litter Action Day. Pick up a piece of trash. Tell your friends. Clean up New Haven. Clean up the world. Number nine, respond to another tweet. An easy way to link up your own key message with that of similarly minded fellow Twitterers is to retweet tweets that are relevant to the issue you want to promote. Retweeting other users' messages can help you to build alliances of association with other organizations with whom you might be able to share an audience. And it may have the added benefit of establishing a pattern of reciprocity, whereby the same user whose tweets you retweeted may return the favor by retweeting your posts. So here's an example of a uh, post that I retweeted from Zero Litter. Pick it up. It makes a difference. People are less likely to litter in areas that don't already have litter. Number 10, tweet in a series. Because of the punchy, decontextualized nature of tweets, people tend to think of an individual tweet as an isolated entity. To an extent, this is an accurate way of looking at tweets, since ultimately every tweet lives or dies on its own merits. Successful Twitter users, however, develop strategies for developing tweets in a series that covers unfolding events over an extended span of time. Thinking of your tweets as a series of connected updates can help you build suspense and possibly readership as you give followers a chance to virtually participate in an ongoing event. So here's the example from Clean Edru uh, Keep Edward Beautiful. Update number four, two hours into the clean up thon and we already picked up 1,075 pieces of litter and counting. Number 11, link to other online content. One of the key functions of Twitter in the ecology of the internet is that it acts as an access point for other web-based content. As different users post links to different sites, they turn Twitter into a place where the unfathomable vastness of the web is channeled into a specific index of the most exciting, most relevant, or most particular popular content available at any given moment. Tweeting a link helps you to become a part of this network of portals and to build your own message into the cybernetic architecture of the World Wide Web. Here's the example. Way to go, Kathy Chamblin. Keep America Beautiful's Volunteer of the Month with a link to the website. 
Number 12, post a picture or a video. A picture is worth a thousand words. There are about 15 words in the average tweet, which means that a picture is worth 66.66 tweets. Say it all in one easy step by posting a picture. Twitter gurus agree that using photos is a uniquely effective way of getting your followers' attention. You can choose not to read a tweet, but there is an involuntary aspect to seeing a picture. You can't not see it. Use a picture that is bright, colorful, and easy to understand to make an immediate connection with your audience. So here's my example. I have this beautiful picture of Edgewood ducks enjoying their litter-free pond. Hashtag keep Edgewood beautiful. Number 13, ask a question and listen to the answer. Tweeting is a two-way street. Organizations get the most benefit out of their social media activity when they take full advantage of the interactivity of web-based platforms to pay close attention to the manner in which audiences are responding to their message. When people respond positively to your content, respond with gratitude. Ask them to elaborate on what they liked about what you're doing and see if you can get them to make suggestions about what you could do better. When people respond negatively, rather than turning them out or tuning them out or feeling discouraged, Use these comments as an opportunity to reflect on what you might do to win these audiences over, or at least to engage them in a constructive conversation. So uh, here's the example, a hypothetical example. I'm at replying to Paul Smith. I agree with you that KEB could do more to help the park. What are your ideas? Of course, you can probably think of dozens more formulas for writing successful tweets. Combine these ideas into new arrangements, continue to brainstorm different ideas, and scan through Twitter feeds to get inspiration from other users. Social media technology is still new and evolving. Jumping into the Twitterscape is a wonderful way for both you and your brand to become a part of this exciting evolutionary process.